Hi, my name is Heather, and today I'm going to show you my process, my materials I use, and my tips and tricks for creating murals. These are things that I've learned along the way through either conversations with friends who also paint murals and my own experiences painting murals throughout the years. I was recently commissioned to create a castle mural in a boy's bedroom, and I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to walk you step by step through the whole process. The first step for creating the mural after the client has approved the final design is to grid out the mural if that's the way that I want to transfer it to the wall. I like to do this method for murals that are pretty simple, just kind of more like simple shapes and hard to mess up really because there aren't a lot of fine details that like need to be in a specific spot. If I do have something pretty complicated, like with a lot of little details, or if it's something that's hard for me to draw, like a horse or something, then I will want to project it onto the wall using my projector, and then just trace over the lines. So for the castle mural, since it was pretty simple, and you know, I can't really mess it up too much, like if I make a tower too tall or too wide, like no one's really gonna notice, so I just use the grid method. So I pulled the sketch into Photoshop and then I just put lines to like divide it in half and then in fourths, um, both horizontal and vertically. And then I just wrote out like the feet, the number of the feet of, for the measurements of the wall. Although the measurements actually did end up being a little bit different. So I guess the client had just guessed at the measurements. So I just had to kind of finagle that when I was actually drawing it onto the wall. But the other way that I'll also do the grid method is actually mark out like each foot. But since this was a pretty simple mural, I figured like fourths would be fine. After I got to the client's house, first I taped off the trim around where the mural was going to be and then I just used my t-square to create those lines and for these lines for the grid and also for the sketch I used a pencil because the wall was such a light color but normally I would really like to use chalk because then it just wipes right off really nicely but yeah I kind of have to have a darker wall color in order to use the chalk so that it shows up and I can see it so I'm just gridding out my wall and then after that then I just do like a rough sketch of the mural. Now this might be different with other murals. Maybe I would paint the background first and then do the foreground like sketch out the foreground over that. But with this one it was just kind of a weird mural because so much of it is the foreground that I didn't want to like paint a whole background and then end up covering half of it with the foreground. So usually I have like a lot more background in it and then I would actually do like the entire background first and then do, you know, the smaller elements in front of it. So anyways, I just drew out the castle and then after that I could proceed with painting the background. For the background, since it's such a huge area, I like to mix the paint in these reusable Dollar Tree containers because first of all I have a big amount mixed and then secondly I can have a little bit left over in case I need to cover up any mistakes. And I also like to mix in a little bit of the Liquitex matte medium because this helps the paint go a lot farther. And this is one of the tips that I got from another artist, actually from April Heather Art. She's a really really talented artist and I definitely recommend like following her on social media and stuff but anyways she gave me this advice and it has changed my life not just for murals but also just for even doing canvas paintings this stuff also really helps really well just for blending so for the mural it'll just make your paint go a lot farther it'll help you blend a lot better because it's really hard to blend those big areas with just paint by itself without the matte medium to kind of just make it 
blend a lot better and go a lot farther. It's kind of like adding water, but it's different because water will thin it down, whereas this doesn't really thin it down. The paints that I use for the mural are just any kind of acrylic paints. For the base coat for the wall, I like to use a matte wall paint, but then after that, it's all just acrylic paints. I really like the Dick Blick Blick Acrylic paints, and I also like Liquitex Basics. So another thing about this mural, when I got to the lady's house, she told me that she didn't want the mural to have like hard edges in the parts where it's not like right up against the trim. You can see there's like a dresser to the left of the mural and she didn't want it to go right up to the dresser, which, you know, totally makes sense. So she wanted the edges of the mural to be kind of more like loose and like brush strokey and just kind of like blending into the wall a little bit rather than having like a very hard edge. So you'll also notice that along the edges, like the left and the top, that I do that, I just kind of dry brush it into the wall. So here I'm just kind of applying the first base coat of the blue paint with a little bit of gray in it and a little bit of white in it and just kind of blending it out, just getting like the base shapes down and brush strokes down and then I will end up going back and filling in the empty areas later. But this kind of gives me an idea of like what the sky is actually going to look like and especially with the edges being a little bit different and you know it always kind of transfers to the wall as a mural a little bit differently than the sketch so you know I'm just kind of getting an idea of you know how it's going to look. After that then I start blocking out the castle so I'm just kind of getting the basic shapes down and then I plan to do the shading later. I like to do that because it kind of breaks the mural up into simpler steps. So it's like getting down your shapes and your base colors. And then after that, really worrying about like the shading and all that on the next coat on top of it, rather than having to like worry about all that stuff at once. So anyways, that's just what I'm doing right here. Just kind of blocking out those colors. And here you'll see one of my essential supplies which are wet wipes these are really good for fixing mistakes because it can be such a pain having to like wash your brush off so then you have like a wet brush that you can you know go over the part that you messed up and then try to like wipe it with a paper towel if you just use a wet wipe you can just wipe it right off it comes off real nice and clean i mean you might still need to go over it a little bit like you can kind of see those little white lines where it took off a little bit of the background but overall it's just so easy. And I also like to use those wet wipes when I'm all done with the mural. If I used chalk to sketch out the mural, then I can just wipe off the chalk when I'm all done using the wet wipes as well. And then of course they're good for your hands too. So yeah, they're very useful for murals. So now I'm going over the background with a second coat, just kind of filling in those empty spaces and really using my matte medium to blend in really well with the paint that's already dried that's there. And you'll see that I'm using a styrofoam bowl. So this is another thing that I really like to use for mixing my paints, like if I'm mixing for a really big area. Then I like to use those styrofoam bowls because I can mix like a really good amount and I don't run out really quickly like I would with a plate. So after I was done with the background, then I went ahead and did the water that was down below. And I really love doing this kind of thing where it's low to the ground and I get to just sit down and work. <laughs> Probably because I definitely have some lazy bones in my body. But it just gets so tiring standing up and painting all day that it's just so nice to be able to sit down and paint. So I do try to spread out the work that's like higher up on the wall so where I have to stretch versus right in front of me where I can just stand normally versus kind of low where I kind of have to crouch down and then where I get to just relax and sit on the floor and paint because otherwise, you know, my muscles just get like really tired doing the same thing all day. And here you can see where I'm painting everything lighter because the client actually came into the room and she was like, oh, can you actually make the castle lighter than the original design? Because that way it'll 
keep the room kind of lighter looking and that's okay because I still had to do another coat anyways the shading coat so I just did this for the shading coat and so for the coat where I did the shading just so that I would have a pretty consistent color across the whole castle for the shadows and the highlights I actually mixed up those colors separately so I mixed up like a light gray and then a lighter gray so that I'd have like the regular color and then the highlight color and then I just kind of switched between those as I was painting and then that kind of kept it all consistent because it can get hard to keep it consistent when some of the paint dries and then you know you might be like remixing your colors and then if you match it to what's dried it actually is going to dry darker so then it's going to end up being darker than that and then it's not going to match. I've definitely had those issues before. So this is how I keep the colors consistent across the whole castle. So after that, the next step is just to add in all the smaller details to the castle. So I'm just using my small flat brush to add in those little curves that are um, on the border part of the castle. I don't know what it's called. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of adding those in and luckily since I had mixed my grays beforehand, then I could just use the gray castle color to paint those little kind of like cut out parts there. And then after that, I added in my little highlights with uh, my number five round brush and some white or very light gray actually. And then I added the door. Then after that, I went ahead and added in the shadows, and then I also did some of the highlights that I might have missed in some places. So for the shadows, I just used a darker gray than the other ones, and I used my matte medium to kind of help blend it in with the paint that was dry there, because basically, like the edge of the paint where you would normally blend it into the other paint, instead I would have matte medium, and so I'd kind of be blending it into like the clear of the matte medium. And so it kind of looks like it's blended once you're done. So now I'm sketching out the windows with the chalk. And I mentioned the chalk before because this is what I really like to use to sketch. Anytime I'm sketching on like something that's dark enough where I can use the chalk and it'll show up. The reason I like to use chalk is because after I paint in the windows, then I'll be able to very easily just wipe off the borders of the chalk. If I were to use like pencil or something, then it wouldn't be easy to get it off like you have to try to erase it and you'll probably like smudge your paint up or take some of the paint off on accident I mean it's just it's a mess so the chalk is just a really nice easy way to make a sketch and then be able to easily wipe it off later and I use this for my canvases too like after I paint a background on the canvas then I like to sketch out whatever the subject is in chalk so then I can just wipe it off later after the painting's dry so after that, it's just the finishing touches. So I'm painting in the moon with the yellow, and then I go through and do like the little yellow streaks in the sky and the white streaks in the sky and do a second coat on the windows. I'm just using a damp paper towel just to wipe off the chalk, and you need to make sure that the paint is completely dry for this. So, you know, definitely wait a little bit to make sure that it's completely dry. And you could either use a wet paper towel or a wet wipe, either one. And then sometimes there is a last step, which is sealing the mural with the Minwax Polycrylic. So this is another tip that I got from April Heather Art. And I only use this for some of my murals, like for example, ones that are in public places, like at a school. So like obviously that's going to get a ton of traffic and... You don't know what's going to happen to that wall. But the one in the bedroom wasn't really going to have any traffic or activity or touching of the mural because it's just in a bedroom and, you know, the kid's a little bit older and he's probably not going to, like, mess around with the mural or anything. So it should be okay. It's not really going to need any protection. But if I do any that's, like, in a public place or for, like, a really little kid that, you know, might be messy or drawn it with crayon or you, you know you don't know what they're going to do then I always seal it with the Minwax Polycrylic and definitely make sure if you use this that you have a mask like the one I have on here because there was one time that I was in a room sealing the mural with the polycrylic 
and someone came in and they were like oh wow how can you even breathe in here and I was like really I don't even smell anything and then I walked out of the room and all of a sudden I felt really dizzy and like nauseous and I had to sit down and I was like holy cow like what am I doing to myself and so ever since then now I always wear this kind of mask and with this mask on like you can't smell anything it is so amazing it's just like you're breathing clean air and it's really nice so I definitely recommend something like this and then for applying the polycrylic you can just use a big paintbrush that's what I always use and just brush it on and just make sure you don't over brush it so you just want to brush it on quickly and let it dry and then you could do like a couple more coats and you just want to make sure you don't get any air bubbles in there so you want to brush it like kind of lightly I have seen that some people use a roller to do it but I've never had great success with that I tried it once and I got like tons of air bubbles and it just looked horrible and I was like that's it I'm using the brush so I always just use a paintbrush to brush it on so that's about it for all of my tips I hope this was helpful for you let me know if you have any questions in the comments and hope to see you next time. Bye.